What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Sally Speed Jump. And this is a special one because this is our 100th episode. So for those who have been watching this whole time, I am both sorry and thankful that you've seen all of the stuff that we've put out. But uh, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different on this episode. My dad has come up with some cockamamie idea to do with the Gremlin. And we're gonna apparently make this thing rocket powered by the end of the episode. And if you stick around to the end, we'll be doing a giveaway. So you don't wanna miss that because it's gonna be pretty good. We want to give back to you guys for all that you have given us because we wouldn't be making any of these episodes if you guys hadn't been watching. So every one of you are very much so appreciated. And yeah, you stick around, we'll make it worth your while. Yep, should be good. Peanut doesn't look very excited. Peanut looks skeptical. So Peanut's gonna be our little astronaut. We got a little astronaut suit for her. We have a rocket and we'll see if she can be the first Borky in outer space. What is a Borky? A big old Yorkie. No. <laughs> anyway, all right, well, we're gonna get to work. We've been doing some arts and crafts here in the shop rather than real automotive work is what it feels like. Yeah. So we'll show you what we're working with here in a second. So some of what my dad has rigged up are these two kind of stanchions. I don't know if you ever seen a picture of like the 747 carrying the shuttle. Is this going to be on par for that? We got a gremlin carrying a rocket. I mean, you got Virgin Galactic, you got the Strata Launcher, you got Blue Origin, then you have SpaceX. Well, now we've got Gremlin 1. Gremlin 1. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, we're doing our own space program. Yeah, so he's rigged up these things that are notched out for the rocket to sit down in and they're being attached to the car with these bolts. Only the finest back here, hose clamps holding the rear one on. We'll see how this is gonna look here in a second. I'm sure they use hose clamps on the space program. Yeah, at least some zip ties, I would yeah. assume. There's gotta be a zip tie on a, on a shuttle that's gone to space. But yeah, so we're gonna put this rocket on there, this rocket down here, and it's even gonna be rocket powered and then we've got a little something special with the uh, propulsion system of the car as far as making contact with the ground that I don't think, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody do something so stupid, but <laughs> it's an idea I had and we're about to make it happen. Yeah, I'm entertaining my dad's weird ideas on this one, that's for sure. Yep. <laughs> Nothing about this is practical or reasonable, but it should hopefully be at least a little bit entertaining. So he's gonna get these kind of attached to the car and then we'll show you the real party piece that's gonna go on this thing. So to go along with our little space program over here, you need some of those weird wheels that NASA has. So 55 gallon drum should do it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we actually have a car wheel and tire inside of here. That's rubber and that's a wheel. And we've gotta cut a hole to access the lug nuts. Yeah. And these are gonna be on the back. And it should shoot some sparks and make for easy donuts because this is not really a powerhouse, but metal on asphalt should be something stupid. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just ready for the cops to show up and start asking questions on yeah. this one. Well, people normally do like, they'll do hard plastic, like on the drift trikes. Well, we're doing metal. Um, the Excelium kind of, Racing 100. I guess this was race it's fuel. It's racing fuel, race yeah. Race fuel at one point. <laughs> yeah. I had to buy actually a set of tires that were the right size for the barrel. So I've put a little bit into this. There's some R&D behind it. R&D. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. He's put a lot of effort into this though. So if you guys would humor him and leave him a nice comment down below. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> if anybody's ever done this or had such an idea. Yeah, well, it all started with this. We had this cone on a property that he bought, the 16 inch nose cone for a giant rocket. But, you know, when you see the police chases and the people burn their tires down to where they're on rims and the cars really get squirrely, that's kind of the same concept, only we're actually going yeah. for that. Well, this is the great debate. Is this a wheel or a rim? Like this oh, is the rim, but right. the whole wheel is a rim? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to drill a big old hole in this thing with that four and a half inch hole saw. Which is going to sound terrible. And it's noisy, so. Oh, it sounds awful. I got tinnitus, so I got to protect my old ringing ears so they don't get worse. <laughs> That's good. 
custom right there. Makes for some nice sharp edges. Where you can slit your wrist. As you put lug nuts on, yeah. Good enough. Yeah, I'm gonna clean up those edges because my wrist is gonna be in there putting wheels and tires on. <sighs> I don't even know, guys. All right, it is officially time to put the rocket on the roof of the Gremlin, which is a sentence I never thought I'd say in my entire life, but here's where we're at. Actually, mounting the rocket on the car was Jacob's idea, and then it just kind of snowballed from there. I kind of said it as a joke, and now we're here. To infinity and beyond. It's beautiful. Well, there you go. That is at least some of a rocket on the roof. We still have to put the stabilizing fins on it. And uh, they're very cartoonish. They look like they belong in the Jetsons. But my dad's been working a lot harder at this than he would ever, ever care to admit. And it's been fairly amusing for me, but also very confusing. Yeah, if I did this kind of work actually on a real car, I might actually accomplish something. <laughs> Instead, you're doing this. I will say it does look pretty awesome. I will give you that. Yeah, the fins add a lot to it. Officially has the last fin going on. It's definitely aerodynamic now. It's, could you say it's finished? Finished, oh my goodness. <laughs> As you can see, we've done some painting back here where you don't see any of the wood. Got the little rocket canister Don't installed. tell them there's wood in our rocket. They're going to think we're janky. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just don't look at the rest of everything going on. No rocket would, no real rocket would have wood in it. I mean, I'm sure there's been rockets with wood in it before. Who hasn't played with model rockets? And there's definitely well, some rockets, plastic but... and some wood. What, you think this counts as a real rocket, not a model rocket? Yes. <laughs> uh, that may be a stretch. So we still gotta do a couple L brackets. And we're chasing the sun. We're losing our daylight. But I think we'll be okay. Cause hey, don't we want it to be a little dark to see the sparks flying off of our rims? <laughs> I don't even know what to tell you guys. We're gonna have a barrel of fun. Yeah, we gotta put some L brackets to hold the rocket down. I think ratchet straps would be the move, but he doesn't want ratchet straps on there for the aesthetic. <laughs> Have you ever seen ratchet straps on the space program? This is not the space program. I hate to break it to you. You are not taking this seriously enough. <laughs> Somebody could die. Oh my goodness. As you're attaching your stabilizing fins with wood screws. That's true. <laughs> They're made in the USA from, from Lowe's. There we go. It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that already looks like fire, doesn't it? I like it. I like the caution sticker. Yeah. May ignite, soak with water after use. Are we gonna take some water with us? We should oh. take some fire extinguishers, probably. Fire extinguishers are always a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we gotta just now attach the rocket to the car with some L brackets, and then we're ready for blast off. Well, we gotta go to the end of the road and put our Put our barrels, our yeah. new rims, on the back of the car. All right, well, we're at an undisclosed filming location where hopefully nobody will bother us and we've got the rocket officially attached to the top of the car. Looking pretty awesome. But now, it's kind of time to light this thing up and go for a drive and see how it does. And then we'll find a spot to do some donuts with our wheels, but we just want to test out the rocket by itself before we get to all that craziness. You ready? Ready. Go. 
gotta be more than that. So we've learned that the firework only lasts for 70 seconds, which is yeah. not all that long, especially when you have to turn around on both ends of the road. Yeah. But we figure while we're down here, we might as well test out our new wheels. And I gotta say, they look pretty awesome. The yeah. white fids with the white wheels, <laughs> it's a great combination. So yeah, it's dark now. So we'll at least get to see sparks. I guess we need to put the other side on and see yeah. how it behaves. Yeah. This will be our test before we, we go to... find a nice open parking lot on another day. We want to see how it'll slide around. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's do the other side and then we'll see what we can we can do with this thing. It does look kind of awesome, though. It's got light walls. It looks need... like a futuristic uh, vehicle. We need to go on all four corners. <laughs> yeah, that would be impossible to I, drive. I, I, yeah. All right. Well, let's change this one out. Well, there we go. It's officially got barrels for wheels, which is probably one of the more ridiculous things we've done. I will say it kind of looks cool on this car. Yeah. The rocket with the wheels really makes it look space age. <laughs> yeah, we just do have to do the fun. I don't know. It will be crazy to drive it. I'm curious to see if they even stay on. All right, let's see how it behaves. This is the side that's less likely to spin, I will say. It's kind of funny looking through that center hole and seeing everything going on. <laughs> this thing is very noisy. Go ahead and romp on it again real quick. <laughs> Spin it again. I think we separated a barrel. Well, I guess we didn't have to take the lids off. <laughs> no. So, I just did that one little rip and the lid blew off. This was the original concept. Yeah, but it looks so much cooler with just the, the barrel wheels sticking on there. Yeah. This one's still got the lid intact, but it went rolling away and ran into your truck. <laughs> Damaged my truck. I think it actually hit your wheel, surprisingly. Wow. So those are just kind of rolled in there, I guess. Yeah, and we just kind of unrolled it. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, it looked cool for a second there. <laughs> the other side's the only one spinning. You ready to see if it comes off? Let's do it. Lost your lid. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah. So the lids don't work, but the rest works really well, actually. Yeah, I want to see what it'll do now. So now that we've got both lids off, now we just have this outer ring, which is what my dad kind of wanted initially. But I don't know how long they're going to last. Yeah, and it's probably not going to be good when they break loose. <laughs> yeah. 
Yikes. I think it needs a lot dip. <laughs> I think you're stuck. <laughs> you buried this wheel. <laughs> like absolutely buried it. Rocket forward, go. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, if you had some more room, I think it would do something. I mean, I got to sling pretty good there a couple times. Yeah, come look at the other side. Look what you did. This is you right here. I guess it was like a shovel. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that bad. It definitely got dirty, but not terrible. I like packed it into the bead a little bit. <laughs> so what do you think of your creation? I like it. It's uh, kind of like the lunch tray casters modified version of that <laughs> Stick up fork at them. They're done. So now we need to find some space, get a new rocket in the back, and then do some donuts. That's right. Get in a cul-de-sac or a parking lot and let her rip. Let's see where the seam is. It doesn't seem bad where the where the barrel is welded together. Yeah. I think we got enough life on them to uh, actually give it a go. I think they'll hold up for a minute. Yeah. You could probably drive home on them. I don't think we're going to do that. Because <laughs> we got to drive it out somewhere anyway. Yeah. Uh, they they perform a lot better without the lids on there. Because it was just shaking violently. Yeah. With the lids. Yeah. For some well, reason. it allows it to move now. I think you were fighting that rigid edge, and now the whole thing can move. Yeah. So, I don't know. Let me back up to our uh, pit area. Pit area. So official. Yeah. Yep, we'll get it changed over, and then on another day where it's daylight, we'll do some more testing with this contraption. I think it's going to work. It's going to be glorious. Ah. I will say it's absolutely wild how those things sound on the pavement. You got lots of room. All right, well, until another day. Well, it is officially the next day, and we have got ourselves a little space program going on. We've got the AMC coveralls we're both wearing that they actually built these cars with in Kenosha. Yeah. And we found ourselves a nice cul-de-sac where there's only one sleeping semi-driver to disturb. And we're gonna see what this thing does, doing donuts and shooting sparks out of the back of the rocket. And as a matter of fact, it is rocket science. Yep. <laughs> Peanuts in her astronaut suit ready for launch and uh, we're just gonna do something stupid to celebrate our hundredth episode hopefully the cops don't show up and we don't go to jail so about these coveralls they actually came from the Kenosha AMC factory after it closed down and we bought them from our buddy Joe Bahachik he uh, he has a bunch of AMC stuff we found these while we were digging through his place and we asked him if we could buy a couple and now we look official. So yeah, the guys were actually assembling AMCs, possibly these coveralls, even this car. Decades gone by. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. wild. So uh, we got to set up some cameras, and then we'll see how the donuts go. All right, you ready? Ready. Go for it.
after effects. <laughs> this one moved in, started hitting the leaf spring a little bit, but it, it gallops up the leaf spring a little, but I don't think it hurt anything. That was pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we need to hang the next donuts the, the other way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sweet. There you go. We celebrated with a gremlin and a cul-de-sac with a rocket on the roof and steel barrels on the tires because that makes perfect sense. So anyways, thanks to each and every one of you guys for watching a hundred episodes of Sally Speed Shop. It's been quite a ride and there's a lot more to come. So please remember to hit that like button and subscribe. And I told you there'd be a giveaway at the end. If you drop a comment down below, you're subscribed to the channel. We're gonna go and pick one of those random comments and be giving away $500. And the rule is, if we pick you, we're gonna announce it on a post here on YouTube. So you'll see it in the community post area. We might make a short about that. So if we pick you as the winner, send us an email at sallyspeedshop at gmail.com. We wanna give back to all the people who have given us a good time here making all these YouTube videos. Whew. I think the car will still drive home. I think so. Although it was quite abusive. Yeah, it could yeah. be worse. <laughs>